Hello and welcome to Development On Demand. The next few minutes will be filled with a teaching that includes leadership principles and mindsets that will help you grow as a leader individually, as well as those you are leading. So grab a pen, grab a notebook, and get ready for development that we believe is best served on demand. All right, another volume of Development On Demand, where we're teaching you how to cast vision, galvanize people, and implement everything that God has given you. Whether or not you believe you are an expert at this, I believe that these are three elements of leadership that can be developed, and the best development is best served on demand. So whether or not you receive this from a leader, hey, that's a good thing. They believe in you. They love you. They care for you. And they see potential in you. Or maybe you sought out after this. Um, all you really realize is that your development is your own responsibility. And that's amazing. You're both in a great place to be. You're in the right spot. In this video today, I'm going to specifically help explain to you how to build a team around a vision. How to build a team around a vision. So I'll title it, How Important is Draft Day? How important is Draft Day? I don't know how many football fans we have here. I assume a lot, you know, people watch sports. So the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of people watch the Super Bowl, and a lot more people watch the Super Bowl than they do the draft. This is interesting to me because ultimately what I feel like is you have to do well in the draft in order to do well in the Super Bowl. This is a big deal, okay? So when thinking about drafting a team, creating your team, coming up with your team that's around you, that you're a part of. Remember, you're having to do both areas. You're having to think for yourself in uh, some ways. I think one of the greatest questions that you can ask is, what are you actually looking for? Like, Who do you want on your team? Because the reality is, is having the right vision with the wrong team can be very dull, okay? It can be drudgery, all right? It could be completely heinous, all right? So what you've got to understand is having that right team makes it all work. And if we don't know what we want in a team or in individuals, then we will settle for what we get. And let's go to Jesus real quick because I believe he did most things very right, okay? Here's what you have to understand, is that Jesus picked his disciples. Not once did he let anyone sign up for his team. Done. <laughs> there you go. That's how you pick your team. You pick them. You pick your team. Who do you want on your team? You go out and get them. I heard um, a youth pastor tell me this once, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is absolutely brilliant. You're so right. It's so, so true. Go get who you think is best, especially for the context of your vision, and don't wait for them to come knocking on your door, because more than likely or not, they won't. It's just not going to happen. So you've got to kind of identify what those personality traits or what those attributes would actually be within your team. Now, I'm talking about any kind of team, whether you're an organization, whether you're a kids pastor, whether you're uh, leading a team creatively. It's just who do you want to be a part of your core? Who do you want to be a part of your immediate team? So some of the things that I think about is I want someone who's teachable. Now, this is for me. You got to create yours. A lot of what I'm doing within these DODs is really just to help you how help you understand how I think and how I process. And then you take from what is going to be beneficial, most helpful for you, and then apply some of those things. As you're hearing two or three of these DODs, you're realizing, okay, I do that differently. That's totally fine. But man, there's a hole here that I never thought about. That is my goal is for you, us to be able to fill some holes in your leadership. So some of the things that I think about is, all right, when I'm thinking about 
a team member, I need them to be teachable. It's just, it's got, it's a thing. It's a thing. For my kind of leadership, I need them to be teachable. I don't care if you're old or young, I just need you to be teachable. I need you to be willing to go through some stuff. I need you to be okay with failing and I need you to be able to learn from it. I need you to be hungry. I need you to want more. I need you to, um, I need you to be, to have a, a desire and a hunger to accomplish things and to achieve things and to go the extra mile and to go above and beyond. These are things that I'm looking for. I, I, I want an owner, right? You've heard the concept of owner versus renter, right? Renters very rarely, you know, mow their lawn and, um, take care of, of their, you know, plumbing and all that stuff. No, because they can have, they can call someone to do that and they leave it going for too long. No, but an owner? Oh man, when I became an owner of a house, Lowe's became my favorite store. I'm getting the grass ready. I, I know how to fix everything in my house. Why? Because I'm an owner. That's my house. It is up to me in order to make shifts or adjustments adjustments and those are the kind of people that you want on your team not someone who just goes eh that's not my job that's a renter that's a renter i want an owner on my team especially if they're going to be a leader i want someone who's passionate i need this because um i'm passionate so a lot of people would say not these things and that's totally fine but for me it's like i want passion because i need to be able to read you I need to be able to read your face. If I can't read you, it's gonna be really hard for me to want you on the team and then want you to be a leader, much less want you to be a core leader on the team, okay? Because I need to be able to read you. I need to know what you're feeling because for me, a big thing is that I wear my emotions on my sleeve. You know exactly what I'm thinking when I'm thinking it, okay? Now, I've got a, I've got a, uh, rein that in a lot of times, but the reality is, is that people aren't having to guess. They are very clear on whether or not I am upset or whether or not I'm challenging them or whether or not uh, I'm good with something, right? So it leaves the ability to go, you know what? I know at least what my leader thinks, right? Might not be what I want them to think, but I at least know what they think. That's just me though, okay? Then another thing that I would think of when I'm thinking about team members is, team members is I want like buy-in, okay? Now this is a big phrase and I want you to highlight it, I want you to circle it, I want you to write it down because buy-in is huge and we're gonna talk a lot about this, but buy-in is a big, big deal. Right, have you bought into the vision? Have you bought into me as your leader? Have you bought into me, to, not into me, um, have you bought into this church? Have you bought into my pastor? Have you bought into the word of God? Have you bought in to everything that we are about? Have you bought into other team members? Have you bought into the processes of um, what we're doing it and how we're doing it? Now, when thinking about your setting, you know, all right, these, these are the three things that I want within in my team. What you've got to also remember and understand is that leaders are very rarely found. They're formed. Okay? So please know that. Leaders are very rarely found. They're formed. And if the leader is found, you're going to have to pay them a whole lot of money. Okay? Oftentimes, you're having to form the leader that you are wanting right? Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because now you, when you talk about that standard that we just set, being teachable, hungry, being an owner, being passionate, and being buy-in, now you're looking, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, if I've got to form that, well, then um, uh, uh, the, they don't have to have all of those things. Well, remember, you decide what those non-negotiables are and then what the things that you could like, you know what, I could negotiate a little bit of that. So let me do that for you now. If I said those five, teachable, hungry, owner, passionate, buy-in, probably the two that I would say, ah, eh, we can negotiate, would be um, uh, being, being passionate and uh, being hungry. I'd say, you know what, I can work with that. I can work with, I can work with someone who is teachable, who's an owner, and who has buy-in. 
Does that make sense? So that's how I would um, uh, naturally do it. Now, I think another level, you know, you're identifying what you want in a, in a leader or in a team member. You also got to identify what you don't want. Identify what you don't want. People don't do this when they hire people. People don't do this when they um, initiate a coordinator to a director. People don't do this when they think about bringing them from a volunteer now to a core team member um, who is helping cast vision immediately from you, right? You got to think about what are you not looking for? So I'm looking for people like, or I'm looking for things, like these are the things I don't want to see in a team member. Being unwilling, Ugh. right? So I will like, and <laughs> being unwilling is the thing that probably gets on my nerves more than anything, if I'm honest, I'm just being honest with you, here's my vulnerability piece. Um, but it gets on my more nerves more than anything because it says a lot more about what's inside of you than anything else. It's a lot about preference, a lot about pride. And um, so, so I, I tend to try and find out how willing people are by asking them to do the smallest things possible in the most random times. This is literally what I do. It's, it almost feels like a game. But it's not, it's just I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly evaluating, inspecting what I expect, okay? We talked about this in, in previous DOD. I will ask people, people who have been with me for seven years to people who have been, who are you know two weeks new onto the team, I'll ask them to do the smallest little thing and see what kind of energy they give towards it. And it will tell me everything I need to know about being willing or being unwilling. These are just little things that you can do to be able to find out the status or the pulse of each team member. And here's the deal, it changes, right? You ever have that team member that like starts out, you know, on your team and <clears throat> very unwilling, but then six months goes by and they get more willing and a year goes by, two years go by, and they're like one of the most trusted people ever because ultimately it's, that's probably how they built trust is they weren't a person that gave trust immediately. They were ones that needed to be able to build it from the ground up. So then you gotta worry about the ones who, are, uh, who give trust immediately right? Like this is what I do. I give 100% trust from the jump. And then if you lose it, it's like almost double the points, okay? And it's, and it's harder to, to gain. These are the ones you got to be aware of because um, when, when, I, when I think about it, these are the people who are like six years down the road, seven years down the road. You're like, whoa, you used to be so willing. But now like, Wait, what is it? So that's what I mean about evaluating both ends of the spectrum is really, really huge constantly and consistently. Another thing, attitude. Ooh, attitude. Now, don't get this mixed with ego or with pride. I'm talking attitude. Just people who are looking to be mad and have a bad attitude and upset and frustrated and bitter for the smallest of things, okay? These are, this is what I mean by attitude, okay? At the end of the day, what I'm saying is set a standard, don't apologize for it, okay? Matthew 13, 44 through 46, it says this, and I think it'll give us some things that I believe we really have to sell out to when it comes to building a team, things just to really be looking for. Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and he buys that field. Let me tell you right now from that one verse, this is the guy that I want on my team. He found something. He did something with it. He covered it up. And then in his joy, not in his frustration, not in his uh, obligation, in his joy, he goes and sells everything that he has. Talk about selling out to something, right? When I talk about buy-in, I mean selling out to, right? And then buys 
that entire field. Gives everything to be able to get that entire field. Okay, a couple things that we can learn from this. Good stuff is beneath the surface in the dirt. Good stuff is beneath the surface in the dirt. It's gonna be messy. So, how does that relate to building a team? Good stuff is beneath the surface in the people, okay? It's gonna have to be formed. You're gonna have to look at the potential. You're gonna have to look at what could be, what might be, right? This is huge. Here's the deal. Your leaders, your students, your parents, your, your kids, your ministry, your team, your, your, your direct reports will not buy into it if you don't sell out to it. So let's sell out to a, a few things, okay? Let's sell out to a few things. I think we gotta sell out to standards. I said this, right? Sell out to a standard. What is the standard when it comes to building my team? This just reflects significance, okay? Don't apologize for the standard either. If someone else has a different standard, you can learn from them. But then at the same time, understand like you set a standard. This is what you want within your team and you know yourself better than anyone else, okay? So like, for example, when I came to Elevation Church, one of the first things I loved was the intense leadership. I was like, no, this is for me. Is it for everyone? No, but it is for me and I love it. And I'm gonna sell out to it. And I brought my entire family here and am selling out to it constantly and consistently every single day, right? So that's the thing, excellence, sell out to it. I'm just giving you again, practicals, right? Practical examples, because a lot of times we'll use that, well, leaders aren't found, they're formed, right? We'll use that as an excuse and we'll go way to the other side and we'll just, we'll just pick people who are available. That is not what I am saying in, this room right now, okay? Sometimes, and very rarely, sometimes you need to pick the person that is available. There is some moments, but it's very rarely that that is happening, okay? Oftentimes, it's a lot different. So, um, sell out to those standards, okay? It reflects significance. Um, intense leadership is a deal. Excellence is a deal. We, we sell it to the idea that development is your own um, responsibility, which is why, you know, we're no longer doing this in front of a crowd. We're doing it, you know, in front of, you know, four media members. And what we're going to do is send it out as a link. And guess what? It's your responsibility to watch it all and to do the download on demand afterwards and so that we can discuss it three weeks from now. That's up to you. We're selling out to that. That's the standard for us. If you want to be a part of this team, that's what's going to be asked of you. You get what I'm talking about? Okay, so you're seeing it. The second thing you got to sell out to is your strategy, okay? You can have an excellent strategy, but still lack commitment. So strategy is a really, 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 really important thing, okay? So again, this is, goes off the idea that I'm not just picking people that are available. I am being very strategic of the people that I need. When you look at the disciples, woo, all of them different. His three, woo, different, right? But it's almost every single one had a specific role to play. And here's what I want you to understand is that the right strategy is the one that you do all the way. That's the right strategy. The one that you do all the way, okay? The one that you do all the way. So for some, it's like some people are like, oh, you should be on a carnivore diet versus a plant-based diet. Blah, 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 blah. And then you got someone who's like, no, um, you know, we do, we do weekly services for our youth ministry. And some say uh, we do monthly services for our youth ministry. And then you got, hey, we do uh, puppets for kids ministry. And then some say, no, let's not do puppets uh, for kids ministry. I, I, I don't care whether it's cardio or weightlifting or whatever, doesn't matter. Just sell out to a strategy. So when you're thinking about your team, sell out to the strategy of who you are picking. There's got to be a strategy when picking your team. And a part of selling out to that strategy is you want to sell out to your strengths, okay? 
This is what helps that strategy piece, right? Now, what we should understand is that admitting weaknesses really allows God to use us, okay? This is like keeps us relying on him anytime that we admit weaknesses in the right environment and in the right um, energy and spirit in which we say it. But sell out to your strengths at the same time, okay? What are you good at? What is your team already good at? What do you not need more of, right? And then, and then develop those strengths and, and develop the weaknesses as well. Don't let it just be, we're all extroverted people, just giving you a practical example. We're all just extroverted people and we all think the same and blah, blah. But then we've got no other kind of like swing onto the spectrum to where it's like we could be a well-rounded team. One of the greatest things that I did in my leadership this last year was to combine all of the ministries that I had underneath me. And instead of it being an e-kids ministry, youth ministry, and college young adult ministry, I said, you know what, we're going next gen ministry. Because what I felt was e-kids was missing some stuff, youth was missing some stuff, and college young adults was missing some stuff. But once we put everyone together, we have everything that we need. And now we're starting to develop the right strengths and realize um, where we can develop some of the weaknesses. This is really important when you are choosing your team. You can't just choose nine of you. Stop. <laughs> it don't, it, it, it's gonna get boring eventually. And the more diverse people that you have in thinking, okay, the bigger the reach the increase of influence that happens. Then you gotta sell out to your sphere. Sell out to your sphere. What does that mean? The circle of concern is always bigger than the circle of control. The circle of concern is always bigger than the circle of control. And if I'm focused uh, on what I'm concerned about, I will lose control of what I have. So what do you actually have control of? Okay, now that you have that, here's what you need to understand. The phrase somebody oughta or somebody should is the graveyard of vision. Some, yeah, somebody oughta do that. Somebody should, yeah, that ain't me. That ain't, that ain't, nope, that, that's not me. That's not my job, right? Uh, this, we say nothing's not your job. We say everything is your job, right? Okay, everything should be your job. You are an owner. I'm selling out to the sphere and I'm gonna control the things that I can control, right? But I'm part of a, 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 a great team and if I'm hearing people saying somebody ought to or somebody should, whoa, 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 what are we talking about? Like that, that's, that's not gonna work for me. So you gotta sell out to sphere. Then you gotta sell out to your season, right? Sell out to your season. I ain't talked about language in this one, but I'll talk about seasons in this one. Everything that flows in the next season of ministry or the next season of life will be from what you sell out to in this current one, okay? so. Everything that you're doing with your core team now will determine what happens to them a year from now. Who you choose to bring onto the team now will determine who leaves the team a year from now. You've got to understand both play hand in hand, okay? Um, the, the, the leadership lesson of you reap what you sow is never more prominent than in leadership. It just is. You reap what you sow. So what things are you sowing within your team? What things are you sowing when you bring someone in, the type of person, the type of thought, the type of thinking? What are you sowing? Because you will reap, and you can't just look at it at a surface level. You gotta dig down deep and see what is really there within that person, okay? You wanna be able to sell out, dig down deep in, with the person, but also dig down deep in the season. There's some people that I've said no to on hiring, and then in the next season have been like, okay, now we can hire them. Because I knew that if I would've hired them you know, a year ago, that they wouldn't have stayed on staff. 
or that they would have been frustrated and I would have had to do a lot more work on the back end to try to get them to stay, right? So all of this is playing hand in hand with it within each other. Then the last one, you gotta sell out to sacrifice. Okay? You have to sell out to sacrifice. We have lost something when we see what we do as a bother rather than an honor. So if it's a bother to develop a person, to be a part of your team or to be on the core or to de develop the next generation of leaders or to develop a, 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 a volunteer or to develop a student or to develop a kid or to develop a, a, a student in college, we have lost our ever-loving minds because it should be an honor to do that rather than a bother. Oh man, here we go. What do I got to do? Well, if you're saying that, then your vision ain't bigger than you, right? And this is something that we've been talking about in the last three or four DOD. So, so the thing that I kind of bring up is Matthew 28. It talks about the Great Commission. We should, you know, go make disciples of all nations. Well, Luke 24 is the other perspective of the Great Commission, but they don't call it the Great Commission. They call it the Great Blessing. So what you're telling me is the Great Commission should be the Great Blessing. When you're developing people, it should be a blessing. When you're Forming people, choosing, it should be a blessing. Yes, there's frustrations. We can be on it. Yes, there's tensions. Yes, there's uh, attitude you got to fix. And well, again, you go with the culture uh, phrase. Culture is created with two words, yes and no. What are you saying yes to? What are you saying no to? I watch so many people have a bad attitude and the leader won't say anything about it for years. And then they wonder why they have to fire that person or why that person leaves and takes 20 other people. Well, you should have told them at the beginning that that attitude wasn't working and it wasn't going to fit in this mold, right? So fill in the blanks there. It might not be attitude for you. It might be something different for you, but I think it's really, really important that we understand that building our team is the great commission, which should ultimately be the great blessing, okay? Now, when you have your team and you're identifying your team, you've got to be able to care for your team. You gotta care for your people. What are we talking about when we talk about people not caring for their leaders or caring for their volunteers or having some sort of care structure? That, that's just, when I talk about core team, I'm talking about care structure. I'm talking about having a structure, having a plan, right? We're talking about vision, imagination, wisdom, coming together, building a plan for the future. Plan, structure, right there for the future, not just me having 20 leaders, but me having 60 leaders. What structure do I have to build now to care for 60 leaders so that I can care for 300 volunteers? Those are the things that we should be building. Those are the ways that we should be thinking about building our team and forming our leaders. But here's the deal. I'll get more into that in the next couple of DODs. This is a lot. Chew on this. Download it a little bit, okay? Get it into your soul. Once you get it into your soul, let God breathe on it. And for the next few moments, as it's being downloaded into your soul and you're letting God breathe on it, you're gonna be able to take a few moments and do a little download on demand right after this. And then come back next week for some more development on demand. We love you. Thanks so much for watching Development On Demand. Take a second to reflect and download everything God was speaking to you throughout this time. And after you're done with that, share it with a friend or another leader in your life, and we'll see you in the next one.